have all three presentations and then we'll have a, a discussion. So with this, I would like to invite the, the first speaker from uh, the University of Minho, Maria Giovanna Masciotta, who will present uh, the value of structural health monitoring for the structural behavior of masonry structures under varying environmental effects. Have you heard? Yes. Okay. So this is uh, just a brief outline of the main points I'm going to talk about uh, during my presentation. First of all, I will start with the focus and scope of my study. Then I will show you the general framework uh, uh, underlying my work. I will go to, through the case study describing the structure we analyzed, the uh, key performance indicators we identified and tracked over time. And then I will talk about the warning levels and threshold value condition we define. And I, I will finally uh, go to the, con the conclusion. Well, since we are here, I guess we all know why structural monitoring is important, so I'm not going to spend too many words about that. But uh, one comparison I always like to make when I talk about structural monitoring is the fact that we engineers act on uh, structures the same way doctors act on human bodies. So basically, we start with a, an uh, anamnesis of the structures. We collect all past information about the structure. We gather all possible data, and uh, we do a condition survey. Then we move to a diagnosis phase. So we study the symptoms of the structures. And from there, we go back to the building pathology. And then from there, we move to, we address a certain therapy. So we choose uh, remedial measures rather than uh, other kind of certain remedial measure other than other kind of intervention. And then we control over time the efficiency of the remedial measure we adopted. So stated that, going back to the scope of my short-term scientific mission, basically, basically I tried to, to find a, um, a link between structural monitoring and performance assessment, or rather I tried to show how to use the Mm, all the information that we can collect uh, through monitoring campaigns to assess, better assess the performance of our building, of historical buildings in this case, and how to integrate this information within a strategy for structural manage management purposes. This is the framework uh, underlying my work. Actually, it's a general framework that can be adapted to any kind of structures, so not only to historical buildings, as in my case. The first thing that I wanted to do before starting my work was uh, having a systematic, setting a systematic approach in order to follow a step-by-step -step procedure and to reach my goal. Um, this framework is, in fact, a step-by-step -step approach in which each step is kind of a piece of a puzzle that contributes to create the final picture. Uh, so once we know uh, the structure we are going to deal with, we do visual inspection, we acquire all possible data, and then we, in case of historical building, of course, uh, we do an historical investigation because it's very important to know the building phases of the structures. And we collect as many information as possible to select the best key performance indicators that we can track over time in order to have a complete di sorry, diagnosis of the system and uh, um, also mm, to up the definition of treasure value condition and warning levels to, mm, and to finally use all this information to uh, effectively understand better the structural performance, to understand whether the structure is still uh, uh, meeting our uh, life uh, uh, safety requirements or it's deviating from the target behavior. And then we can use all this background uh, all this information for structural ma management purposes. This is the case study structures I've been uh, uh, analyzing. It's the church of San Torcato that is located in a new monument village close by the more famous cities of Guimarães in Portugal. It's uh, an historical uh, church uh, started in, uh, eight, which construction started in uh, 1825, so, and stretched over two centuries. Uh, involving the work of three different architects. 
This is an hybrid style temple because it's a mix of, uh, of different styles, Gothic, classical, and Renaissance styles. This is the geometrical survey of the church. As you can see, uh, the church has a Latin cross longitudinal plan with a, a central nave ending into an apse that is oriented towards north and a transept. Uh, the, um, the facade, uh, each limb, as you can see there from the picture, is covered uh, with a, a barrel vault and the crossing between the limbs is uh, capped with a dome. Uh, the facade of the building is a gable facade with a central rose window and a tympanum here on the top and is framed, symmetrically framed, by two spire towers which reach a total height of uh, um, about 58 meters. This is the damage survey of the church. The church was severely damaged because uh, it presented here these big cracking part patterns with cracks reaching over 50 millimeters here at the top and uh, the major cracks was even crossing uh, the whole thickness of the, of the facade. And beside this big cracking pattern, there were several vertical cracks uh, along the, uh, the weakest link of the side walls of the, of the church. And because of this uh, severe damage in uh, 1998, the University of Minho organized a wide experimental campaign in, which included uh, condition survey, damage survey, visual inspection, uh, and, uh, and also the installation of simple monitoring system to, to monitor the crack, uh, and uh, the use of um, optical theodolite and so on, topographic survey, ge geotechnical survey, to understand which was the building pathology. And basically, um, with the geotechnical investigation, it was found out that the main cause triggering the, the V-cracking pattern and also separation movement of the towers. It was the uh, differential soil settlement um, in, the, in the strata uh, beneath towers and facade. Because uh, basically the church is built on a, on a slope which was uh, uh, leveled by a landfill bank. So in the part here, uh, the bedrock layer is very close to the foundation of the system in the apsis and transept area, but it goes deeper and deeper while proceeding towards the front of the, of the temple. So basically this is causing uh, an increase, a worsening of the damage going towards the facade of the, of the church. And this is also causing a separation movement of, uh, uh, and the tilting of the towers. This, of course, this situation can lead in a long-term perspective to uh, the failure of the system. So um, the experimental campaign allowed to understand that the most active part of the church was exactly the facade where there was this um, severe damage. So basically both uh, crack width and opening rate as well as the tilting of the towers uh, were judged the critical factors reflecting the structural performance of the church. That's why they were identified as key performance indicators and together with these key performance indicators, we decided also to take into account another indicator uh, that is the correlation with ambient parameters. This is an important parameter to take into account in case of historical buildings because we all know that uh, historical buildings are almost always built with masonry, and masonry is a porous material, so due to that, uh, historical building can uh, be extremely prone and sensitive to change of environmental condition, especially to change of temperature and moisture content because they can also close the opening and closing of, uh, of the cracks. So I I'm talking about key performance indicators. Uh, of course, we all know what they are, but exactly in simple words, what are key, perf key performance indicators? Why are they important and how they can be tracked? Well, key, um, key performance indicators can be simply defined as case-specific quantifiable measurements that help to establish baseline information on the current state of the system health, can help to set performance standards, can help to optimize the control of the structural integrity uh, of the system over the operational lives, and can help to quantify changes in the system response. How can we track them? It depends on the key performance indicators we, we select. In our case, since we are dealing with crack width, tower tilting, we used a static monitoring system, so uh, consisting of four tilt meters, two per each tower, one in each direction, 
two cracked meters, one for the crack on the outer side of the facade, another one for the crack on the inner side of the facade, two surface temperature sensors, and one combined sensor for temperature and relative air humidity. This is the uh, evo temporal evolution of both cracks opening rate and tower stealthing over five years monitoring because the system is working since April 2009. And uh, if we look, uh, for example, at the evolution of the uh, crack opening rate over time, we can see that there is a linear increasing trend with uh, reading a um, opening rate of 0.1 millimeter per year, which is higher in case of the external crack, which is highlighted in red here. Regarding the tower stealthing, we can see that both the towers are uh, present a common uh, uh, trend, are, have this uh, in-phase cyclic os oscillation in both uh, uh, east-west direction and north-south direction, but the um, uh, oscillation amplitudes are higher here for the western towers. In fact, uh, also if we look, uh, they both have a common trend in leaning towards with the south direction, but this is, uh, of course, greater in case of, uh, of the western towers here, where we reach also a, a tilting values of uh, almost uh, one millimeter per meter. This is the track of the Senki performance indicators, but uh, comparing also with the temperature on the top and with the relative humidity on the bottom. As we can see, with respect to the cracks, uh, if we read uh, uh, the coefficient of correlation here at the bottom of the, of the chart, with respect to the outer crack, there is a certain correlation, even although, it, uh, although it's uh, rather weak. By the way, um, it's uh, um, common, like uh, when the temperature increases, the crack width actually decreases, and vice versa. This basically for the outer crack, because it's the one that is more exposed to the environmental conditions. And uh, looking instead at the correlation with respect to the tower stilting and temperature and humidity, the coefficient correlation are very high, especially with the, with the temperature. In fact, the uh, cyclic um, os oscillations of the towers actually reflect the seasonal fluctuation of the temperature. With this inverse proportion, in the sense, it depends on the orientation actually of the static monitory system. When the temperature increases, the towers are actually leaning towards southwest. When the temperature decreases, decreases, the towers are leaning towards northeast. And opposite is with the, temp with the humidity because, of course, temperature and humidity have an inverse uh, relationship between them. So, uh, as I've shown before, the main cause triggering the B cracking pattern in the facade of the building, as well as the separation movement of the towers, is the differential soil settlement in the strata uh, beneath towers and facade. So, um, since the progressive increase of tilting can lead over uh, in a long term perspective to a decrease of the tower stability, we decided to define some warning levels according to certain criteria so as to evaluate the current state of the, of the structures and also to support a future decision on structural management. We define three levels with corresponding uh, like, uh, action like in a general way, and then uh, probably in the future more specifically. And in case of deviation from the target behavior, of course, the relevant warning level is issued. Each warning level is separated, uh, of course, uh, by uh, respect to the other one by a border line. And to set this border line, we use the, uh, we compute a threshold value condition uh, by um, a stability analysis of the Western Towers. We took into account the Western Towers because it was, uh, as I shown before, was the one showing greater oscillation amplitudes and higher tilting values. For the stability analysis, we adopted a um, few assumptions. We consider the tower as a rigid body, so uh, undergoing uh, rotation movements about a fixed axis at the bottom of the foundation. The equilibrium condition um, mm, mm, is guaranteed if the resultant of the f compressive forces, of course, is within the, not the section in this case, but specifically within the central core of inertia because we adopted the assumption of limit analysis, so to avoid tension, uh, because we use no tension material with infinite compressive strength and no slide emitting units. That's why we consider as equilibrium condition the fact that the resultant of the compressive forces is within the central core of inertia, not only within a section. To solve, uh, uh, to find our threshold value condition, so we solve the, basically an equilibrium equation. 
and uh, uh, we considered uh, both uh, the plans, so the east-west direction, which is the one parallel to the facade of the building, and the north-south direction, that is perpendicular to the facade of the building. And of course, we consider the whole system composed by the tower and the foundation. Uh, so the solution of the equation gave us the threshold value condition in terms of maximum tilt angles and maximum top displacement in uh, both the direction. So we obtain uh, tilting uh, angles with a pretty, I mean, the structure is safe. So eight degrees and 18 and almost four degrees for uh, the perpendicular direction, not the direction. And uh, these values correspond to the limit condition in which the, the resultant of the compressive, force, compressive forces is tangent to the central core of inertia. Mm -hmm. So we compared this value, of course, with the current values of the, of the structures, which are based not only on the tilt meters, but also on the survey obtained from uh, the laser scanning, because the tilt meters, of course, are relative uh, values. So we try to have absolute value from the laser scanning. And uh, we compared, and we could, of course, state that the, so far the structure is behaving uh, within a, a target, uh, a tar within a normal range. So it's uh, as um, it's still in level zero. Level zero. Whereas, uh, of course, to reach uh, the alarm level, uh, the structure, the variation of the tilt 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 trend should change uh, consistently. So so far we are. Uh, in a, a completely safe condition, but of course, uh, until now we worked, uh, if we look at this chart, on the vertical axis. Uh, what about the um, temporal axis? What about the time? Uh, we are going to work on that too. Uh, so um, in order to, to do that, uh, we need to develop predictive model, and we are working on that. We, we are going to forecast the structural response into the future in order to estimate future inspection periods also, and to support, of course, uh, uh, future decision uh, uh, on sector management. But uh, before doing that, we need to update our key performance indicators because uh, actually the structure uh, last year underwent uh, a strengthening intervention that was uh, basically uh, devoted to the, um, the elimination of the of the um, soil, uh, differential soil settlement, as well as the reduction of the tilting of the towers. So um, we monitored actually the structure through the intervention. We are going now to install a new monitoring system, dynamic monitoring system, so we will add not only crack width and op opening rate and tower tilting as key performance indicators to track, but we will also monitor the natural frequencies and more shape of the structures, and also we will study, we'll keep on study the em environmental variability of the system. Uh, just a few remarks, of course, uh, the uh, assumption that I adopted for the limit analysis are simplification of the really complex behavior of the masonry material. We should also take into account the solid structure interaction because the rotational stiffness of the soil is important because it can vary the outcome of the equilibrium analysis. And also we should always control the admissibility of the um, compression uh, tensile stress in the structures because the high stress levels, of course, can cause, uh, can lead the system to fail before the defined the threshold conditions. But what I wanted to, to show with my work, and uh, it was that um, uh, the information collected through monitoring campaign can be effectively and uh, efficiently used uh, within a strategy for the preservation of the historical buildings. And uh, well-designed key performance indicators as well as threshold value condition and uh, uh, warning levels are fundamental for structural management purposes. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Maria, for a very interesting contribution. So, from the 